printer, those, those uh, printer's makeups became, um, they, they, you didn't lose them, nor did you bother them or borrow them. It was, it was something that I think you could start wars over in, in the back shop if you borrowed someone's makeup. Uh, they, they were the sign of a printer, a true printer. Um, there's a story told about a, 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 a printer, pressman, line type operator over in um, Basin by the name of Press Anderson. Don't you love that name? <laughs> Press Anderson. Who at one time found himself in a city where there was a Republican convention going on, or a national convention going on. And he knew that this candidate for the presidency, my mother swears it was Warren Harding, I didn't have time to look it up, um, was an old printer, had started his career actually as a printer. So if it's not Warren Harding, fill in the blank for somebody else. He went to the door to try to gain admission to this kind of private meeting that these Republicans were having, and they wouldn't let him in. So he reached into his pocket, pulled out his printer's ma makeup, gave it to the guy and said, you take this to him and see if I can't get in. Pretty soon the guy came back, gave him back his printer's makeup, and he went into the meeting along with everybody else. It was his, it was his uh, admittance into this very private and very small um, little club of people who did uh, a remarkable thing for a long time um, by printing a newspaper in that way. There was another aspect in later years to, um, uh, to, the, to the old linotype, uh, not linotype printing, but old hot type printing that we used. And that was at one point along the line, the advent of photos into it, which was a little bit more complicated than, than what we have today. I'm gonna send around a few of them. You can see that they're all on blocks of type, wood type. And if you look real carefully, you can see the um, sort of the etching on it, the dot that actually allowed um, the ink to attach to it. But these these two were all locked into those pages when they were when they were printed. They were etched on with acid. Through a, a image of the photograph was etched on through acid. And like everything in those days, it was reused. The wood blocks they removed then. You, by fire, believe it or not. They would um, remove the, the, t the glue from that. I can remember as a little girl um, going out in the back of the gravel standard to watch the, the help burn these things off. And they were just like, they would just put a match on them and the fire would start and it would burn for a little while. while. And I guess enough to either loosen the glue or to, to, uh, um, or to completely burn it away and they would take the other the zinc plate off, throw it away, and they would start all over again with another piece of uh, a photo on, the, the, on that wood block. One of them, too, you can actually see the sort of print, this one with the raccoon. Mm -hmm. as, as, as you can tell, there was nothing easy about what they did. They had to breathe in this horrible stuff. They had to take this extra time that we don't today to have to do it. They had to start fires in order <laughs> to use some of the stuff, whether it was the whether it was melting down the lead or using the, the photos over again uh, to make things work. Nothing was easy. Yet every day or every week, um, newspapers were, were produced, which always made it um, rather interesting. I passed around the wood block, and, and you saw all of that. Um, usually a newspaper at some point would have bought or would have some very, very large type. Okay, the stuff that you would, you know, if you had a huge headline or a need for something, you would have that. Does anyone have any idea what sort of letters they would have so that they would be prepared for something? And I'll give you a hint that newspapers also always, almost always had job printing along with them because that paid the bills. So it could be a, a headline, it could be in job, um, a job printing or anything. Does anyone have any clue of what it might be? When you think of war, you know, we're gonna have war, it's gonna be pretty big <coughs> out there. But my parents, I said that the thing that got used the most were the, were the letters I 
C E because ice happened every year and war did not and you had to print ice somewhere along the line every summer for the, the downtown businesses that wanted to advertise the fact that they had that. No hunting was also a pretty big one in your end bills. That's where the, actually the really large type type came in and was used. We, we went from that process, and I think Jack was saying that in, uh, about the time, that, well, even before you moved into the new building on, uh, um, on 2nd Street up there. Uh, and let me stop, by the way, because I found out tonight a couple of things from Jack. The Gillette News was actually printed, he said, the, the um, longtime office for that was somewhere around where um, Hardware Hank is now. Yeah. Uh, between second and third on that side of the street anyway. And early on, the, the Campbell County record was actually based in the basement of um, Pat's Hallmark for a number of years. At some point in there, they built the, the building for the Campbell County record, which is behind the old post office, or uh, the old post office grill now when when back, which is where it existed for a number of years. We figured it had to happen somewhere around 22 to 25 because they had a big sign out in front um, and it said the record, which existed for the entire time that it was the news record until it moved out to, um, to the Second Street location. And so it was at that, at that site for a good 50 years, probably, or more. Uh, at least. And it was really handy, Jack, what I would say, because it was near the post office. And he was saying the other day when they moved the building out to the Second Street location that he didn't think that it could, it could work because it wasn't next to the post office. <laughs> <laughs> it did. I found the other day, <laughs> actually Jack found, and I thought it'd be fun to uh, pass around. We were looking for some original plans for the building to see if they had some architecture stuff in there. But he found an old appraisal from 1981. And you can see what was at uh, what was there at uh, Burma and 2nd Street in 1981. It was almost nothing. It's fascinating to look through. You know. 